Hi, my name is Paul Brockman. I'm director of Manuscript and Visual Collections at the Indiana Historical Society. And today I'm going to talk about Harry, Harvey Harry Boyd, also known as Lewis Kimball. This is my second time and I know what I'm getting into and I'm still doing it and I don't know why I'm still doing it. But anyway, here it goes. I'm going to try a different theory this time. I'm not going to put the whole thing in my mouth because that, that hurt a lot. So I'm just going to take bites in between times. Okay. okay, so here we go, and a one, and a two, and a... Harvey Boyd was born in 1840 in Monroe County, Virginia, which became part of West Virginia. In May 1861, he enlisted in the Monroe Guards of the 27th Virginia Regiment, and he served with Stonewall Jackson and served at the First Battle of Bull Run. He was captured Oh, I spit it out. In June 1862, and sent to a prison in uh, Fort Delaware in Delaware. He was exchanged in August of 1862 and returned to fight for the Confederacy. And he was a big fan of Stonewall Jackson's, as most of his men were, and got really disillusioned after Jackson was killed. But, and he, and he continued to fight in May 1863. He was wounded again. And this time he decided, you know, I've had enough. This is the second time. I'm really from the western part of Virginia, which one month later became West Virginia, which is why I don't think he was that big of a fan of the Confederacy. He liked Jackson and, anyway. We don't know what happened to him after May 1863. He was listed as uh, wounded and missing. I gotta take another bite because this is so good. I presumed he went back to West Virginia, which by that time was part of the Union. But we don't know. So, next time he surfaces, it's January. 1865 in Columbus, Indiana. And he is working. He was friended, befriended by this family called Clark. He worked as a teacher, farmer, all that kind of stuff. And in uh, January 8th, 1865, he changed his name to Lewis H. Kimball and enlisted in the uh, Union Army in Company H of the 11th Indiana Regiment in, 18, in February 1865. So why would he change his name to Lewis Kimball? Well, you know, if you're fighting for the Union, and you used to fight for the Confederacy, and you got captured by the Confederacy, Confederates, they're not gonna be too happy with you. So I imagine he changed his name so in case he was captured, he was not going to be like immediately executed. So um, he was known, he wasn't the only one to do this. Uh, Southerner, Southerners who did this were called galvanized Yankees. And they either deserted or they just were captured and said, you know, I don't want any more of this. It's better to be in the Union Army than to be a prisoner in some hellhole. So he was sent to, uh, uh, let's see, Camp Fort McHenry in Baltimore, and he guarded prisoners. And this, this is till he uh, was mustered out in August of 1865. Okay, after the war, he returns to Columbus and he marries Minerva Clark. Now Minerva Clark was a daughter of this family that he that took care of him. Well, his luck was none too good. And in 1911, he was working as a school janitor, got his arm caught or hand caught in a sliding door, developed blood poisoning and died. Um, the thing, thing is he did get a pension in 1890, and his wife continued the pension, 
we have records of pe three different people saying, yeah, Lewis Kimball is a really Harvey Boyd, and he really fought in the regiment in the, for the Union Army. So, things we learned, we have diaries of both, one of him in the, as a Confederate from 1861 to 1862, and as a member of the Union Army and post-war in 1865, which is really sort of cool because I've never seen anything like that. You know, as a good soldier, he complains that neither army was any good, and he was pretty miserable as most soldiers were. Now, this is the end of my tale, and somebody had better give me some milk. Why, thank you, kind madam. Here's a Kleenex for you.